Probably the worst thing I could say about the gunk, developed by Image and Form Games and published by Thunderful, is that it's remarkably inoffensive, and enjoyably unremarkable. In the opening hour, it feels like a classic Image and Form game. Polished, compact, mechanically satisfying, with quirky characters to carry the narrative. However, the longer you play, the more you see the rough edges. Unfortunately, for the gunk, as a relatively breezy experience, it really needed exceptional polish to stand out. The gunk takes place in a distant future where humanity has spread to the stars, abandoning an environmentally devastated Earth. Predictably, no one has learned to think. Corporations still wield more power than governments. Discovering natural resources to exploit is the most profitable venture, and there's no shortage of strip-mined worlds left in humanity's wake. Enter protagonist Ronnie and her captain Bex, cruising the galaxy in their dilapidated ship, scanning for the location of resource deposits they can sell to corporations. An energy burst leads them to an uncharted planet, and their adventure kicks off in earnest. Narratively, the gunk is trying to convey both a message about environmental conservation and the value of friendship. Now it succeeds, especially in how the core gameplay loop revolves around restoring the environments you explore, but the narrative pacing is off, and the delivery feels uneven. Ronnie, having been previously crippled in a mining accident, and her mobility restored through robotic prosthetics, is hell-bent on discovering the source of the titular gunk, restoring the world to its natural state, and saving what life remains. Bex, on the other hand, is more interested in completing a contract so they can pay off their ship and improve their socio-economic status. In theory, this combination of wondrous discovery and competing interests should make for a good narrative, but the gang keeps the stakes low until the final hour. Events come to a boil and are resolved just as quickly. Sure, it's by no means the only game with these pacing issues, but it's much harder to excuse when you have the control offered by a linear experience. Compounding these issues is the uneven quality of the cutscene and in-game line delivery, especially during the opening hours. I legitimately like the characters, especially the empathetic culinary robot Kurt, and the trajectory of the story, but it felt notably less polished than Image and Form's prior efforts. A single run of the gunk will probably only set you back six to seven hours, depending on how thoroughly you explore a few side paths for scannable objects and resources. It's brisk by modern standards, but fair for the asking price, and the core gameplay mechanics only hold up that long anyway. The gunk plays like a conventional third-person platformer puzzler, with some clunky combat encounters that only require observation and a little bit of timing to overcome. Most of your time is spent running, climbing, jumping and pulling switches as you explore the uncharted alien world. Ronnie's power glove allows her to hoover up inexplicable amounts of the gunk and cleanse infested areas, leading to a dramatic resurgence of plant life that, in turn, opens the way forward. Aside from an upgrade that allows you to pull out versatile plant pods, which grow new platforms or explode, and a laser that's used mostly for triggering switches, these abilities never really evolve. Your progress through the world is also strictly linear, even if a few areas allow you to pick which side path you want to tackle first when you need multiple switches. As a result, the gank relies on escalating the complexity of the puzzle-type roadblocks to keep you engaged. The earliest locations include some basic platforming, cleansing patches of gunk, hurling seed pods, and maybe fending off some annoying mini-beasts. Mid-game challenges involve more precision platforming and time switches, or juggling mobile gunk swarms and larger creatures. By the end of the game, the gunk feels like a gauntlet of back-to-back -back puzzle rooms and combat sequences, culminating in the only true boss fight. Now there are awe-inspiring locations, some wondrous, others intimidating, but relatively few action-packed set pieces. As such, the gank is a game for those that enjoy solving multi-step puzzles to progress at their own pace. To aid you in your progress, restoring corrupted areas and exploring short side paths reveal several resource types you can hoover up with your power glove. Think metals, organic material, fabrics and alien material, which can then be used to incrementally upgrade your gear or increase your survivability back at the landing campsite. Now aside from the aforementioned plot-specific upgrades, these all fall into the nice-to-have category. Think stuff like more efficient power glove suction, or the ability to survive a few more hits, but none of them are essential to complete the game. You get back to your ship using a simple fast travel system between beacons, but aside from revisiting the ship's workbench, returning to other locations is usually pointless, outside of a brief comment on the reduced level of gunk infestation. Visually, the vibrant and distinctly alien environments can look stunning, even if the character models and animations look stiff and distinctly last-gen during the cutscenes. Luckily for the gunk, the focus on exploration and discovery means the beautiful backdrops, lighting, and a fantastic soundtrack 
Do most of the heavy lifting, and keep you immersed. There's also plenty of banter as you explore. Think comments from Rani about the location, or maybe chit-chat with Bex over the radio. But, as with the major story beats, the delivery is mixed. Unfortunately, this lack of polish extends beyond presentation issues, and Rani has a remarkable ability to snag on objects as you explore. She'll also often slide off ledges you're pretty sure you reached, and can get stuck in a fall animation for several seconds if you jump on uneven ground. It doesn't help that the platforming feels loose, and mantle grabs are limited to clearly marked surfaces. Now, it never stalled my progress, falling to your doom only results in a quick reset to the nearest ledge, but it made several epic platforming sections feel frustrating rather than tense. Overall, the gunk is a brisk, enjoyable, but unremarkable adventure from image and form. The heartfelt story, quirky characters, and distinctive designs were on point. However, the mostly unchanging mechanics, uneven presentation, and general lack of polish felt uncharacteristic and brought down the experience. Yes, it's a budget title, and their first game with full 3D environments, but I feel like the gunk deserved a few more months of polish to ensure it shined when it launched. At a $20 equivalent price point, it's easy enough to recommend to fans of the genre, and certainly well worth a look if you've got an active Xbox Game Pass subscription.